Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. It's 5 to 11 here on this Wednesday. We are in the, the middle between Christmas and New Year's, and boy, it is so easy to forget what day of the week it is. I just feel like like yesterday, we actually ended up having a makeup piano lesson, which made it feel like Wednesday because we normally have piano on Wednesday, but this is an off week. But anyway, with all the sickness and, and bad roads of December, we had to make up a piano lesson. So that just really screwed me up yesterday, thinking that it was... Yes, I thought yesterday was Wednesday, but today is Wednesday. I'm in the kitchen and... I think this is gonna be sort of like a Sunday prep, but it's gonna be a Wednesday prep. I just have a number of things running through my mind as to what I'd like to get made today. I have nothing on the calendar, nothing at all that takes me away from the house today. And so it's just kind of nice to be able to just kind of think through things a little bit slower paced than pre-Christmas. So I want to make some split pea and ham soup. Yesterday when I was grocery shopping for my big like once a month for January here coming up I wanted I was at Aldi and I only wanted to go to Aldi you guys I I mean I did go to Dollar General first, but I wasn't thinking about split peas at Dollar General Maybe they had them there. I don't know But Aldi was completely out. They had red lentils, but I just didn't know if red lentils would sub in for green split peas, I mean just that sentence alone. Of course they're not gonna sub in for uh, split peas. So I only have a half a bag. I'm still going to make, I think, the whole recipe though. I'm just gonna use a half a bag. That's just how it's gonna be. So it's gonna be maybe a little bit more liquidy of a soup, which is okay. Oftentimes I find that my split pea and ham soup ends up getting really thick after like the second day. So this should be just fine. I have my leftover ham bone. It's been in the airlock, which is that little space between two doors at our house, and it is rock hard. It is frozen solid. So I'm gonna have to let it warm up just a little bit to get it out of out of here. Although I guess that is quite a bit of like fat, so maybe maybe it'll slip right out. But uh, the meat portion is frozen. So what I'm gonna do is get a big pot here onto my stove top and just start putting all the ingredients into that pot. Let it simmer away all day. We probably won't, I know we're not gonna have this for supper tonight um, because I like to let it sit overnight. I feel like the flavor just gets a lot better. So we will have bring this out tomorrow and that's all I can say. So when I started the video, you may have noticed that I have on my apron, which is my probably my favorite apron that I've ever had. It washes up so well, and I was finally able to find this apron online, and I could place an order for aprons, and then I took it to our to a local um, printer, which is pretty cool. The local printer, actually, they employ people with disabilities. Just the baseball caps and the aprons are printed there. I was just really happy to go with a place that employed people with disabilities, because obviously, we have Joe, <laughs> and someday he's gonna need a job. And so that might be a place that he'll be able to work. These are in the shop. I have a very, very limited number of them. Honestly, by the time this video goes up, they may be sold out. We just listed these this morning, and half of them are gone. So, but if they are sold out, just know that I will be placing another order for these, and I will be getting them back into the shop. So anyway, I just absolutely loved the little design that she came up with. I thought that was just so um, cute, and it's like all my favorite, all my favorite utensils. Well, I mean, I love my spurtle. <laughs> I love my spurtle, <laughs> but otherwise, it's all my favorite utensils. made a lot of noise. My onions froze. I've had them out in the garage and I just still have not used, uh, I haven't worked through all of them. I mean, it's, it's fine that they froze. It just takes a little bit more effort to chop them up. I'm starting here with a couple tablespoons of butter and a medium onion. I'm just going to saute the onion until it's soft. I need to rinse my beans. 
I'm also going to measure out my seven cups of water and pull out the bay leaves and the thyme. Right here? Yep, there we go. Doesn't matter. So with the spices, if you really love thyme, you can use up to a half teaspoon. That looks really good. Up to a half teaspoon of thyme. We're not huge fans of thyme, and so I only use a quarter teaspoon of thyme in here. And remember with bay leaves that you want, want to take those out. So once your soup is all done, take the bay leaves out. As far as I understand, they're very sharp. They don't digest well. They can... I mean, maybe it's just an old wives' tale. They say they can, like, cut your intestinal tract or something like that. Anyway, just be safe. Nobody wants to eat the full bay leaf anyway. So when you are all done with your soup, remove the bay leaves. All right, Maria, you can pour in the water. And then can I stir? Sure, then you can stir. Pour it slowly or it's going to... Yep, there you go. And in two. Oh, that was not a big deal at all. It pulled right out because the, like, ham juices had enough fat in them. And then I'll put any extra ham. I'm going to put that in as well. I do have a scoop here of some of, like, the gelatinous ham liquid as well as some fat. And I'm just going to put that in there also for good measure. Oh, is somebody here? I just turned it on high, I let it come to a boil. I did, I mean, I'll show you that quick. I did skim off uh, some of the foam and it just looks pretty gross. That's why I gave you a quick look. I now just turned my heat down to low, covered it, and I am going to let this here simmer away for 45 minutes. In the meantime, I will slice up two carrots I often get questions about why I use a particular knife or a particular spoon or a particular anything. And I just want to point out, I am not a food prep snob. And if you ever see me use something where you say, boy, that's not the right tool for the job, it's just because it's close. That's it. That's my answer. It's because it's close. And I don't like to dirty more dishes than I need to. So I oftentimes will just use, well, not often. I always just use whatever kitchen accessory appliance utensil is closest to me. If I am using very fresh celery, I just bought this celery yesterday. Did you guys see my big once a month grocery haul? Um, it, it was a good one, $550 worth this time. I will use the celery leaves in my soups as well. Celery leaves, well, I, I love celery. <laughs> and the celery leaf is even stronger flavored than the celery stock, so anyway. If my celery is fresh, I use it because then, you know, they're, they're not like getting that weird little yellow tips or anything. So, all right, that's it. It's not a lot for vegetables in, in split pea and ham soup. It's more just to kind of add a little flavor. And this does not make a huge pot. I mean, seven cups of water, maybe two quarts to two and a half quarts of soup. It's not a lot, but it's going to be just right for us because well, I'm guessing actually that Joe will eat this. He will not eat broccoli. He will not eat cauliflower. But guess what? If I make broccoli cauliflower soup, he eats it. He loves soup. So that's a good thing for Warren and me and Joe. I mean, my guess is Joe's going to be with us for a long time. And we all love soup. <laughs> so that's a good thing. That is a very, very good thing. Joe also loves meat and he also loves leftovers. So that's perfect. I mean, it couldn't, it couldn't have worked out any more perfectly in my opinion. All right. So I'm just, I, you know what? I forgot to set the timer. I was going to say, I'm going to get these vegetables in shortly, but I didn't set the timer. So how long ago was that? Probably 20 minutes. I just wanted to give a little shout out to Amy. I know that you're watching. And so, hi, hope you're having a great day and enjoy those cookbooks. Okay, I'm just pulling out some leftovers. It's just about lunchtime here. I have a tiny bit of cheesy potatoes uh, left from... This was from Christmas Eve, right? Yeah, Christmas Eve is when we had that. And then I do have a little bit of meatballs with some pork and beans. I know for sure Joe is going to want to eat that. I have cottage cheese I just picked up yesterday. I have 
from Christmas morning breakfast, I do have some scrambled eggs and a little bit of bacon. Last night, Maria and I made one of these meat lovers pizzas. This was like the take and bake, so they're, they're more of a fresh pizza. So when I saw that they had the discount stickers on them, I picked these up right away. And Maria was not thrilled, I have to tell you. She was just like, oh, look at all that meat on those pizzas. But then she ate it, and she told me thank you probably three times afterwards. She's like, that was really good, Mom. Thank you. That was really, really good. So we have pizza left from last night. I know for sure that Warren is going to want that. And we are only four people here for lunch today. It's just Warren and me and Joseph and Maria. So Peter is at a friend's sleepover. Sam is off shopping. I don't know where he got the idea that you would want to shop after Christmas. That's what I just did yesterday. And I actually did it on the 26th, 26th as well. Uh, we went shopping to Fleet Farm for sale stuff. Oh, and for me, because I'll probably have some of the cheesy potatoes... I'm thinking Maria might want, did I say that? Maria might actually want the scrambled eggs with the bacon. And I have one of those salad kits. I bought two salad kits and they were $2 off. So that brought them to 99 cents for a salad kit. I don't normally like to buy these at $2.99. I mean, I have, but I like to buy them at 99 cents a lot better. And so the date is today. I'm most likely going to eat the salad. And I had one of these for lunch yesterday. I ate the whole entire thing. It says on here three and a half servings. Nothing went to waste. I was really full. I would say the last quarter cup or so, I was like, wow, I'm really full. But I wasn't about it. I wasn't at the point where I wanted to throw it away. And I definitely didn't want to save a quarter cup of salad for today because it would have been kind of soggy because I mixed in the dressing into it. And that Southwest was pretty spicy. So I only put about half of the dressing in it. And then partway through, I needed a little bit more dressing and I didn't want more of the Southwest because it was pretty spicy, like I said. So I just used regular ranch. Now this one is has a creamy Thai dressing. And I did make that coconut curry chicken something or another which I think was like a Thai dish that back before Christmas I really like that flavor so I'm thinking I'm thinking that this flavor is probably going to be pretty good too this Thai Thai dressing but I always start with half the dressing because if you don't like it you can at least kind of mask it with another dressing that you like but if you put all of it in right away it's hard to mask it right my 45 minutes is up and actually it was supposed to be simmering that whole time but I think it was boiling and one thing I've noticed is that with my gas stove low, all the way low, is still very, very hot. I wouldn't change it at all, but just kind of, if you're thinking of doing any kind of changeover from electric to gas, I guess my experience is that it's way hotter, way hotter. All right, I'm going to get my vegetables put in, but not while my camera is turned on because I don't want it to splash up onto the, onto the lens, but then I'll let this simmer away for another 30 minutes. All right, it's been another 30 minutes and the vegetables are nice and soft, you know, just, just how you'd want them for soup. I am going to fish out the ham bone as well as any other pieces of ham in there. I'm gonna let them cool just enough so that I can handle them. I was just getting dishes washed up here from lunch. That Thai salad, if that's what it was called, something Thai salad, that was delicious. Much, much better than the Southwestern one from yesterday. Okay, I have some grapes. Just bought grapes yesterday, and you know how grapes are. If you eat them within like the first three or four days, that is when they're literally the best. Well, like one to four days. Um, so I'm washing up the first bag here. I'm going to get these into, well, I'm going to get them into that bowl. Then we don't even have to dry it and put it away. Get these into the refrigerator. Well, first what I like to do, one way that I will get my kids to eat, they usually, it doesn't take a lot to get kids to eat fruit normally, but a good thing to do is to just set it out. So when I like first wash up fruit, or if we have a whole bunch of oranges or something, I'll slice them, set them on the counter, and then as they walk by, they can just, I just saw some snow fall off. Oh yeah! It's like warming up outside and the snow is sliding off the shed roof and just like in literal sheets. You would not want to be underneath that. Okay, so all I'm saying is that just sometimes if you just leave fresh fruit on the counter, fresh vegetables on the counter, um, you know, I mean, it can sit out all day long. It's not going to spoil and it gets them to eat their fruits and vegetables. Ham is hot, is cool enough to pick. So 
I'm just gonna get some of these pieces over here kind of chopped. Okay, I'm back in the kitchen. It's actually the next day, already supper time. I just peeled some potatoes that I really need to use up and I'm gonna get some fried potatoes going. I just heard Warren and Peter come in. They were doing some ice fishing and I think well, I have steaks thawed, beef steaks thawed from a friend of ours. They raise like some steers. So anyway, they gave us a few steaks. So I have those thawed. And I know that Warren wanted to make those. So I have no idea if he's thinking he's going to grill those or if we're going to pan fry them or maybe broil them in the oven. I don't know what he's thinking, but that's kind of what's going here for supper tonight. A little while ago, I peeled up these potatoes and now I'm just dicing them up. I've got my big cast iron heating right now and I'm going to be make little fried potatoes and I'm cutting them kind pretty small just because I want them to cook up quite quickly. I've got my bacon grease here and I'm going to just scoop out a pretty hefty amount. Some what are you making? I'm making some fried potatoes. I set this on like closer to medium because Joe, what are you doing in the background? Oh, crunching your bag. Crunching the bag. Why don't you throw that away now? So I've mentioned to you before that it, mine is very, very hot. But anyway, my point Yay. being here is that when you're frying potatoes, definitely give them lots of time on one side. See, I did 10 minutes and I could have even gone longer. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to set it for 12 before I touch them again because I really like them to get a good, kind of like a good crunch on them. And I don't always cover when I'm making fried potatoes, but since I'm starting with raw potatoes this time, it just, it helps to keep that steam in and kind of, uh, just helps to cook the potatoes all the way through. A lot of times, Joe wants to get in here, I just know he does. <laughs> a lot of times if I actually am using... Hello. <laughs> if I'm using cooked potatoes already, what I will do is uh, I usually don't put a cover on because they don't really have to. They're just trying to get a good crunch or a good crust on them. But in this case tonight, they actually have to cook and get a good crunch, right? Wait. Right. Oh, I just saw Dad go by. Did you see him outside there? Um, uh -huh. He's out there. He's going to grill. He decided that he'd like to grill, grill the steaks. So we just put some Aldi steak seasoning. Let me show. We just put some Aldi steak seasoning on the steaks. I don't think Warren used this. This one is a little bit spicier, I think. I think I might have picked this one um, up at well, $1.25 tree or something like that. The no try it thing. You like that one? No try it. What now? Yeah, I am trying it. See, I'm filming right now. Well, I can't try it. You don't like it? No. It's been quite a while since I've shown you all a kid pick unboxing. I purchased these Kid Pick subscription boxes for both Peter and Maria because they're the ones who it fits. <laughs> and I've been purchasing these for a number of years. I They get four boxes a year. You can see Maria's reaction. She almost always loves everything in her box. Sometimes there could be uh, a sweater that she's not real fond of, although this one it looks like she's really loving. Actually, she does. She's worn it a few times already. And sometimes the hair clips she hasn't been real fond of because they're a little bit big. What happens is that you choose your kids like styles and sizes, things you like, things you don't like, and then they hand curate a box for your child. So similar to the other subscription boxes that are out there for just so many different things these days. Uh, this is Peter's box here and he got some sort of kind of Rubik's Cube type t-shirt here and the shoes. We actually have to be done with shoes for him because he has sized out of the boys uh, shoes, the, the boys kid pick shoe sizes. He loves their jeans. So I will say between the dresses and for Maria and the jeans for Peter. Those are probably their all-time favorites that they get 
One thing that's really great is that if you're not into the subscription box, you can go straight to kidpick.com and they always have sales. Right now, as of the editing of this video, they have 75% off of tons of stuff. So definitely head over there. They have dresses for like $7.99, $9.99. They have hoodies for $15.99 for boys. So a lot of really, really great prices. Just check the link in the description box below. That will uh, take you straight over to Kid Pick where you can either sign up for a subscription box if that's your thing and you kind of like the element of surprise or if you just want to purchase your own things outright because you want to know that you're getting exactly what your kids are going to love. All right, let's get back to the cooking part of this video and see how the ham soup is looking. When I started filming the other day, and maybe I said this already, I'm not sure, but I had intended to be in the kitchen pretty much all that day, getting all kinds of things kind of prepped ahead and ready and everything, and it just didn't work out that way. So here we are. It's yet another day. And I was just going to serve up split pea and ham soup for lunch. This is Joe's bowl here. Probably not going to be enough. He is such a soup lover. But anyway, I just wanted to show you how uh, the soup turned out. Super meaty. I was so um, happy with that ham bone that my family hadn't picked it 100% clean, which is what they normally do. Uh, so anyway, lots and lots of ham in here. And it's more, grab the ladle here, and it is more soup-like than it is gloppy. You know, a lot of times split pea and ham soup is a little bit more gloppy and much thicker, I guess I should say. But seeing that I only had a half a bag of the dried peas, this is how it turned out. And I actually like it quite well. And Maria has a friend over today. I didn't really know. I know Maria is not probably going to like split pea and ham soup. I didn't know about her friend. Her friend is probably a more adventurous eater than Maria is though. But anyway, I thought I would also make some quick macaroni and cheese and I washed up a bowl of grapes as well. And we do have a few leftover Christmas cookies yet. 